Hey everybody, you're like, what in the heck? There's a live video and nobody's sitting there. So my apologies, I'm trying to simulcast in about um, three things, I don't know. You know me and the technology, it's a good job, it's good times. It's good times when the 45 year old woman pretends like she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Legitimately, I was helping to moderate a Women of Brilliance Summit talk last night by Jennifer Zenzelson. And I could not log in to the, like not even as a guest, could I log in <laughs> to the summit? And I was like, well, this is gonna be interesting. I'm not really sure I'm gonna moderate this. <laughs> All things went well, thank you, thank you very much. And thank you if you participated. You know, we really were so excited to roll that out. Um, Jen and I are good friends, best buddies. So like you all know that she and I know each other, but the way that we know the rest of those really brilliant expert women in their fields was a mastermind course that she and I took for eight months. And I, it's blown my mind in so many ways. And I've met so many good, good people through this experience that I, like, I just can't, tell you enough when when you realize that you have a thing that you want to go for go for it that is my high suggestion to you like life is very very short right it's not worth waiting for just do the thing write the book you know go for the relationship whatever your thing is go for it because we just don't live long enough not to go for it to be honest. But that isn't really what I was going to talk about today. So welcome, welcome everybody live on Facebook and on, I believe I'm on Instagram today and Facebook. I don't know. Again, with the technology, I'm not really sure. So, <laughs> so the topics through the last couple weeks have been self-care because I was part of this Women of Brilliance Summit, uh, which we just wrapped up last night. So again, thank you for participating if you were somebody that came and um, I learned so much. Oh my gosh, some of these people, I had not even thought about like thinking about self-care in that way. They had asked me um, to kind of get it started on November 9th and send it off because I get kind of brainy, right? So it started with mindset, like setting, setting the stage for your self-care mindset, but then the rest of them were really talking more about the tools that you can use to do that. And I would like to talk a little bit today about self-care, holidays, COVID, white supremacist politics that still pervade our systems and are disappointing and harmful to people. There's a there's a real something something in the air right now. Like and I feel it, um, and it isn't just because I'm home this week with a sick child, I feel it. I like feel it, feel it. All of us come from different walks. All of us are, are just trying to make sense of the world, right? Like that's really what it is. You just, you're getting up every day and trying to put yourself in a position of like being in alignment with what you think you bring to the world in some way, shape or form. Because when we veer too far off of that, our self-care is way out of whack. We're way out of whack. It's like, what the hell is the purpose here? You might have to come in and see somebody like me for therapy. Um, it's true, true though. But I really just want to reiterate how these compounding layers of things are, are just weighing so heavily on us. Even if it's not stuff that you feel like you're, you know, firsthand involved in, doesn't matter. It's in the air, quite literally, it's just in the background that we're all in right now. And that takes its toll on you, right? And I think that because it's been per pervasive, right? That's been going on for a long, long time. I don't know, what are we on? Like year five of COVID, I, like I'm super over it. <laughs> but indeed, it's not over us. And it has disrupted like all systems of our life all systems of our life. Sometimes, like in the very beginning, in big, big, really dramatic ways, we were watching ourselves basically derail, right? 
Like my town was burning. Minneapolis was burning because of the murder of George Floyd. This is not like little stuff that's been happening over the course of this time. And even if you're somebody that that your, you know, MO is to kind of like, well, I'll just get into my groove and I'll do my thing. And if I'm in my lane, then I don't have to worry about all that other stuff. It really doesn't um, work that way. Like our, our energetic, you know, body mind doesn't work that way. I wish I could tell you that it did. But over and over and over and over again, we see in the research that just being in an environment where these kinds of things are happening, right, starts to change future generations epigenetically, like in the womb, in the DNA, to making changes into future generations. And of course, that means like the stuff that was happening in our past, you guys, is living in our bodies. That's just legit stuff. So this is, this is hard times. I know that we'd all like to be like, Thanksgiving is next week and we're all going to go see the family. Some of us aren't, you know, like I might not be. I had planned to, but I had a sick kid with me home all week. And I know that you guys know the math on colds. Like if they get them, you get them, right? So, so it's, it, you know, like nothing is normal. And when nothing is normal, we get really bent out of shape. We just do. It, it, it's, it's part of, you know, showing us that we are human. Now, what I want to remind us all of, though, is we are wired for this. Like, we are wired for change. We are wired for challenge. We are wired to adapt even quickly when we need to. Okay? So you've got it in you to do this. And I want to just hone in on this idea of what self-care really is. So self-care, as you go into the holidays, pre-COVID, would have meant that you should double up on your self-care. Okay, I don't know what your baseline is, probably dismal, some of us are in America. But, you know, whatever that baseline is, you should double it. Because the holiday season is stressful. For some, negatively stressful for others, super exciting and positively stressful, right? But stress is stress to the body. It doesn't, it doesn't give it a judgment of positive or negative. It doesn't give it a judgment of good or not good. Like it just doesn't see it that way. Our body mind doesn't see it that way. It's just stress. Stress is stress is stress. Certain hormones get released when stress is in our body. Cortisol, adrenaline, I know you've heard the things. And those eat at our body. So, you know, as a therapist, we would say, you gotta hike that up by two. That's really asking a lot because think about this. In a season like this, a holiday season, right? It, we are going to have to have all these exceptions, right? Like there's going to be exceptions to our schedules and there's going to be, you know, it depends on where you are in participation of different holidays, but there's going to have to be exceptions to making time for whatever those holiday celebrations are and making time in, for the preparation of whatever those holiday celebrations are and making time in your emotional bandwidth for seeing Uncle Joe and Aunt Jan who always drive you crazy. Let me just tell you, therapists are always full in January, not an accident. Just not, it's just not an accident. So if I'm telling you to double that, I'm telling you to double that because there's all of that stuff that's happening. And that's like pre-COVID normalness. So this year is unique because last year I know we, we most of us were still really wary of even getting together. Certainly some of us did. Most of us were still pretty wary. It was definitely on the top of mind of everybody. I think this year is actually going to be more of a doozy because there's a ton of us in here that are just hoping and praying and pretending that <laughs> everything's okay. Like that's our blinders, right? The way that we're trying to cope is honestly by sticking our head in the sand. And that's a survival mechanism. So no judgment. Like it's one of my faves. Oh yeah. Like I just overwork and get into the thing and then I don't have to pay attention to the stress in my life. To the tune of once in my life, I went for two whole weeks without talking, texting my 15 year old child. 
Like, I was mortified that that had happened, but I was going through a divorce and I was, you know, doing the things and starting a new business and trying to just stay in my lane to cope, right? <laughs> and that's what happens. Like, yeah, we stick our heads in the sand. So I think it's going to be unique this year in that I think there's a lot of us that are not paying attention to that compound later. So there's holiday layers of stuff and then there's COVID layers of stuff. And then if you're one of us that puts our head in the sand, there's head in the sand layers of stuff. Like you need to triple quadruple self-care. And if you are dismal at self-care to begin with, oofta, that's what we say in Minnesota, oofta, like, like you are, you're starting from the negative and you're creating more negative. Not helpful, right? Well, and here's the other thing. So a lot of us get into this idea that big grand things are what self-care is. Uh, going to get your nails done, uh, get, you know, I, taking a vacation if you can, you know, getting a, a week away if you can, going out with the girlfriends if you can, whatever your version of that it, it, in big, like it takes planning, scheduling, taking time away from things that are responsibilities and accommodating for that, all the things. Those big things cost us. So I'll, I'll talk about it like it's an investment, all right? If I go out and buy stocks, I have to have some sort of cash flow in order to purchase, but will it pay me in dividends? That's the plan, right? That's why we invest. This is a problem when we're trying to do big things. When we're trying to do big things and we're coming from a deficit, we don't really have it in us to give ourselves that. And if we do, it's almost like the cost of doing it washes out any benefit. Or, you know, the worst is we lose a little bit, right? So I want to really strongly encourage you to just start. We're, you know, middle of November. Just start with small little things that you're doing daily, just small. And I want you to think about this as pennies in your penny jar, right? And if you need to have 30 bucks to buy whatever investment you need by the end of December, we just need to be putting pennies in the penny jar. And then if we need to cash out, we've got it there. Like if something big happens or man, it all comes imploding on us, ooh, then we've got it in the bank. But if we don't have it in the bank and that happens, those kinds of major life transitions come at us or major stressors come at us, it doesn't look pretty, people. And, you know, it, it comes at great cost to people's humanity, honestly. So do little things and do them every day and think of it as pennies in your penny jar towards an investment. Maybe you will have enough by the end that in January or February, you can do something that's on the bigger list. Honestly, self-care is the little things, right? Self-care is getting up and showering, putting the makeup on, feeling like a human in the world for me. If I get up and don't get out of my pajamas and wander around my house, now some days I do that by choice because I'm just kind of done and that feels a little self care -y, but I, I'm telling you that comes at more of a cost than it does to actually get ready because I feel better when I get ready. It's like my body mind has this energetic memory of, oh, she's putting on the makeup and we're doing the hair and we're putting on the clothes. So now like this is the energy level that we're at. If I'm in my pajamas, that's not my energy level. Let's be real. So I think of all these little things as accumulating into major things. They are actually bigger than the big things. They are the things that actually pay off the most for us, right? So I want you to really, you know, just stretch yourself and tell me in the comments, what are the little things that you're going to be doing? What are the little self-care things daily that are the pennies in your penny jar so you are prepared in the micro, you know, macrocosm that is this world right now? And then in the microcosm of your family, you know, local life, and then even more in you, just you, the individual, what are these little things that if you were doing them for yourself daily, 
would really help you to feel better. Making your bed, you know, hygiene in the morning. Is that what it is? Is it cooking meals instead of eating out? You know, I know I always physically feel better. If I don't make meals ahead of time, I'm kind of, you know, up a creek without a paddle is really what happens. So then I do go out to eat. So it's things like this, just start to thinking of the little things. I'm just throwing a few out there that are mine as examples, but my life is pretty boring. I don't have a lot of examples that might apply to you. So I want you to be thinking about it. I want you to be telling me in the comments, what are those things that you are going to be doing? I would love to hear from you. Now, next Friday is Black Friday. I doubt I will be here. I'm just saying. I don't know where I'm going to be. Maybe I'll be sniffling and coughing and sneezing and you won't want to see me because I got the cold that's going around my house. Maybe I'll be shopping. I don't know. Like, I really honestly have no plans. But I have no plans, which is my self-care. So I'm only working a couple days next week. I certainly will pop on live a little bit. But I won't be doing a big live at 5 on Friday. So I just wanted to give you the heads up. Um, we'll meet back the first week in December and guess what that week will be because the next time we meet it's going to be amazing. So November 29th, which is a Monday, is the first day of masterclass. So I do a masterclass for everybody every couple months, month and a half or so. My masterclass is taking what I put into my online courses, what I do in my group coaching, and it's giving you that information in a span of four to five days. What? Yep, that's right. Free to you, Not didn't have to pay for anything online, all that information. Now the way to get into this class is either to go to learntoloveyourstory.com, which is my website, my blog blog website, and click on free masterclass in the menu bar. Honestly, I think I have a pop-up. You can click on the pop-up and you'll go there too. Wh whichever way you want to go, okay? You can do it that way. You also can, can look for me in Facebook. So for those of you who are watching me live on Facebook right now, when you stop watching me, because I don't want you to just leave right now, when you stop watching me, go and look for the Take Back Your Life Masterclass. It's teal. It's got a group of women like in white t-shirts or something on the front of it, take back your life masterclass and join. That is where all the stuff is going to go on, right? So in the masterclass Facebook group privately, because you have to ask to get in, but I, I let you in. So don't worry about that. <laughs> you just have to agree to be nice and play kindly. But if you get into that Take Back Your Life Masterclass group, you will be able to either see me live when I'm shooting this information or have access to these videos between November 29th, which is Monday, and December 5th, which is the following Monday. So for seven days, I'll be shooting them live and leaving the recordings in there for you to access at your leisure. Listen to it like a podcast, come back to it when you have time. I'm doing it a little bit different this time. The next group coaching group will actually be a morning meeting time. And so I'm, I'm dabbling into that. So November 29th and November 30th, which is Monday and Tuesday, uh, and December 2nd, so Monday, Tuesday, Thursday of that week, I'll be meeting at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time if you can do that live. If you can't, like I said, recordings are there, come back to it anytime you'd like, as long as you are in the Take Back Your Life Masterclass. On Friday, however, for those of you who join me on Fridays, I'm gonna move uh, the last hour class into my live time. So Dr. Natalie Live at five on Friday, December 2nd, is gonna be super duper duper fun. We are going to have the final new you orientation to my online courses. And it's, it's the best one for me to do. I mean, it's at the end of the week. So this is kind of, you knew that was coming. <laughs> but really what I'm teaching is process, right? I'm going to give you the tools to do the work anytime you need to. At now in your life, if you want to make changes, uh, two months from now, 16 years from now, does not matter to me. These skills are life skills that we don't get taught in public education. 
parents didn't know about them. It's not like they were trying to just leave us in the cold, but we're not really good in America about te teaching emotional wellness and emotional wellness skill sets. So these are change or growth mindset skill sets. That's what they are. And I do it over a 20 week period in my online course if you buy it as a whole package or in separate sections, which these videos in the Take Back Your Life Masterclass will show you so that you can know what the course material is and maybe you'll just take one, right? Self-study and do one, learn a little bit about something that you haven't thought about before. But this last one on December 2nd is gonna be, or December 3rd, December 3rd. Oh God, my bad, sorry guys, sorry. December 3rd is gonna be the, the very last one where I kind of put it all together and talk about how that creates growth mindset and why that is a superpower, especially in times like these, okay? Everybody, I am so excited. Please tell me, remember, in the comments, I wanna hear about what are the things you're doing daily that are little pennies in your self-care penny jar, okay? Wanna hear about it. There's a wealth of wisdom out there. I can only come up with four or five examples, partly because my brain turns off somewhere on Friday, <laughs> and partly because I, I just am boring life. I mean, I miss white, Whitey McWhiterman in suburbs. Like, I don't, I'm pretty boring. Um, and I know that I've got following, you know, from all over. And so I'd really love to see our collective wisdom lining up on what are those little things, the daily practices that accumulate into the big things for self-care, especially as we head into this holiday season. Well, everybody, have a good couple weeks. I'll probably pop in on you once or twice next week, just quick live. But December the 3rd, I will see you for a full hour. Friday Live at 5. Bye, everybody.